Hey everybody, everybody, I'm back. It's Scott Gold. I am doing another mukbang and I'm doing the mukbang with my steering wheel tray table that was sent to me by Miss Southern Bell. Here is my steering wheel tray table in action. It's working great. Clips right onto the steering wheel and creates a perfect table for my car mukbangs. I love it. Now, this is what I am mukbanging today. I have their KFC nuggets, which uh, I guess are a new item. And this meal comes with these fries and also a biscuit, which is nice and kind of unexpected. When they give you fries, it's usually one or the other. I have some honey mustard. And <laughs> because this is a KFC and Taco Bell combo, I also got a chalupa. <laughs> Why not and what the hell? So the combo came with a beverage of choice as well. And they had Diet Pepsi. So let's get into this. It's been a little while since I've done a mukbang, and I definitely wanted to do one in the car so I could try out this tray table. It took a little um, figuring how to set it up, just because at first it wasn't working right, and then I thought, well, turn the steering wheel upside down, and then it worked perfectly. So you definitely <laughs> don't use this tray table while you're driving, so you know, that's not a problem. So we're gonna try these nuggets. Very good, it's actual um, regular breast meat from the chicken rather than like McDonald's uh, sort of blend it up or whatever those are which you know are good too but this is much more what you would expect from kfc i'm at a very picturesque location you would think i'm a million miles from chicago i'm in the forest preserve right now and uh it's overlooking a nature area here I'll point you out and show you what it looks like. Here's the view that I'm enjoying. And I think to the left, well, you can't see it very well, but there's a bridge and it's very pretty. So while this location is beautiful, I also can't help but remember, you know, I watch the ID channel a lot. I love all the true crime stuff. And forgive me for talking quickly here. I'm on my lunch hour. I have to get back to a meeting, so this is going to be kind of brief. Trying the fries here. Very good. I didn't get any ketchup, but I have the dipping sauce, so that's going to work out well. Anyways, I like the true crime stuff, and this forest preserve was where one of the victims of Serial, Chicago serial killer John Wayne Gacy had, I guess, dumped a victim. Um, now, that was back in the 70s, but it was like a few, like maybe 10 years ago or something, they unearthed one of the bodies in this tall grass uh, and brush and stuff like that. There was an area, I'm not exactly sure where where it was along here, but Apparently nobody had uh, walked back there for all those years. And uh, the remains, like basically bones wrapped in like 1970s clothes and like shoes and stuff were found and they dated it back to that time period. And it's a little creepy to think about, but that was a long time ago. One day I, um, actually I think I taped it and I never made a video. I was by his John Wayne Gacy's 
neighborhood where he used to live and murdered like 30 some odd uh, men and, and teenagers and buried them under his house <clears throat> so someday I should make that video because I uh I kind of showed the uh, location where the house was and stuff like that, but I don't know why I'm thinking about that now. Well, I guess I'm thinking about that because I'm at this location where there was a body, but that's morbid. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. I was in the drive through getting this food and uh it was kind of a long wait there was about three cars ahead of me and there was uh some kind of contractors or laborers in a, a, a truck behind me and when it was my turn to get up to the window i gave her my payment and she just says is that you? And I knew immediately what she was talking about. I said, uh, no, that's the, that's the contractors in the beat up Dodge behind me. <laughs> they were smoking weed. The smoke was pouring out and it just permeated everything. And I'm like, I'm working right now. Like I'm on my lunch hour. So don't be, uh, accusing me. She laughed, but it was, uh, very pungent. <laughs> now, I don't think you're supposed to smoke while you're driving. But, uh, evidently they were on their lunch hour too and ready to have a nice relaxing time. <laughs> so. But this was an awesome gift sent to me by Miss Southern Belle. And I really appreciate it. So, I definitely needed to get on this, making the video, show you what it looks like. Because I did an unboxing of all the awesome things she sent, including a um, really cool coloring book that I've been using. Coloring by numbers. And uh, this tray and some other fun stuff. So, I am just going to uh, keep this in my trunk, and uh, whenever the need arises to do a little mukbang, I'll have it. There's a lot of activity in this parking lot all of a sudden. I don't exactly know why, because there's not a lot to do here. I mean, there's like a trail, but... I don't see anyone using it, so I think they're all just uh, doing the same thing I am. Maybe they're making a mukbang. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to have time to eat this uh, taco, so maybe I'll just put that in the refrigerator at work and have it tomorrow for lunch. Sometimes you don't know when there's a meal deal or whatever, like, you know, well, how many, how much food is this going to be? You know, it's kind of hard to judge. And I was really hungry today. So, usually I don't have lunch. But today I was just really starving. So I thought I'm going to go out and grab something. So I'm trying to get ready for an upcoming trip. I um, I'm going to uh, a wedding for my cousin. So that's exciting and stressful at the same time, just because I hate, I really don't enjoy traveling all that much anymore. It's such a hassle. I always have so much going on. It's difficult to get away. And then 
just getting everything done that I need to do before I can leave. I hate packing. And I really don't enjoy air travel anymore just because it's such a hassle. Sorry, I keep checking my watch. I have a meeting to get back to. But it's such a hassle. And uh, I really try to limit it as much as possible. With COVID, you know, a lot of my work travel ceased and uh, it never really picked up again. Um, you know, we figured out how to do things virtually and so it's not as necessary anymore, which is good. Um, but this was a, uh, a wedding, so definitely going for my cousin and uh, kind of a destination wedding. So, of course, there's always a lot of things going on around that. And uh, the, the groom's mother, who is an aunt of mine, uh, was supposed to be leaving today and uh, is having surgery instead for sort of a sudden thing associated with the condition that she's had for a while so now there's question if she's going to be there the mother and father of the groom because I don't know how you're going to have surgery and then she's like well I, they say I can travel you know by Thursday and I'm thinking you're having surgery today and although it is laparoscopic but still, would you really want to be in an airplane um, like a day and a half after you had a surgery? I don't think I would. As a matter of fact, I know I wouldn't. But I guess it's a little different when it's your son. We'll see what happens there. So we're supposed to have nice weather and I hope I'm not going to tell you where I'm going, but hopefully I'll be making some videos. It should be a nice change of scenery from the gray Chicago normal scenery you see on my channel. <laughs> I used to travel quite a bit, but in the last several years, I really have not done much at all, so. I don't know, I also get nervous about traveling. I don't know why. But, it's just not enjoyable anymore. I was watching a video on 1950s or 60s air travel. And it was so elegant. I mean... They were, there was, you know, they were in the air having cocktails on couches, and the bathroom was like the size of a home bathroom. And I thought, my God, how, how times have changed and how low we've sunk. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard the spacious cabin. Attractively decorated, air conditioned, but draft free. Newly designed individual overhead light units are an innovation. Roominess extends even to the powder rooms, which look like those in a private home. And a new sensation, complete absence of vibration. Near sonic speed, but inside one of the most stunning discoveries. There is no feeling of movement at all, no vibration, hardly any sound. A new concept in air transportation. The travail has been taken out of travel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are now at cruising altitude, 35,000 feet. 
Our flying speed is 575 miles per hour. In addition, we're benefiting from a substantial tailwind, by courtesy of the jet stream. Hence, our ground speed is now uh, approximately 658 miles per hour. Indications are that our arrival at London Airport may be ahead of schedule. I'll be speaking with you again from time to time. Thank you. This is the atmosphere on a jet clipper flight. Delicious food adds to the enjoyment. It's prepared in four simultaneously operating galleys where dishes can be cooked in five-minute ovens. Scenes of living room quiet and relaxation. The mood enhanced by lighting that can be changed from the pale pink of dawn through all the variations to the dark blue of night. It's now like a, it went from like an elegant, beautiful experience, everyone dressed in suits and dresses and, you know, all completely comfortable enjoying these, you know, multi-course meals to being like a cattle call, you know, riding in a wagon on a dirt road or something. It was... <clears throat> not fun <laughs> so and i do remember um when i was a kid in the 80s um traveling and it was a marked different experience i'll tell you that so um even then you know you dressed to go on the air airplane you uh nowadays it's like if you wear your finest pajamas at least a lot of these people do. <laughs> In those days, you wore a tie, believe it or not. And I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous. Now, this was like the 80s. So, I remember when I was a little kid, my mom, you know, having, okay, these are the clothes you're going to wear in the airplane. And we were all, you know, looking good for our air travel. It's a long long way from where we are today. So anyways, I'm going to save this taco. I'm going to get back to the office. I appreciate you watching. We'll do another one soon. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's not too late. If you have, welcome to the family. I love you for watching.